Welcome to another episode of Public Interface. My name is Mark Stiles, and today I'm going to be joined with Adam Roboto, the VP of Data Integration and Activation. Today we're going to be talking about digital marketing tools, how they've been evolving, and where we can expect them to be headed. Uh, thank you for joining me today, Adam. Yeah, thanks a lot, Mark. So my first question for you, Adam, is, you know, what, what is the team that you're, you're leading here, the data activation and, and integration team? What are they focusing on? What are they producing here? We're focused on customer data first and foremost and uh, trying to implement modern practices around collecting that data, um, processing it, and making it useful to an organization. So what are some of the, the current day problems that clients are starting to face and what kind of tools are they using to solve those problems? So I'd say the number one complaint I hear from clients as it relates to customer data is they don't feel like they have a handle on, uh, on a, a centralized understanding or centralized record for, for their customers. What they have are data silos. And there's a frustration that exists when they have this gap between having so much data, but they feel like they're doing so little with it. What, uh, what we're trying to promote at Blear are architectures and tools and methodologies that ensure that from the very ground up, from the design of your MarTech stack, your systems are meant to communicate with one another in a real way that can be, you know, give you access to activate the data at your fingertips. The other thing is that, you know, there's that MarTech chart, which is kind of like over the years grown exponentially with all the tools that are available to us. Is that really helping us or is that hurting us? So it's a little bit of both, right? Um, so for every new marketing technology tool, I, I think we were referring to Scott Brinker's blog, Chief MarTech, and he releases an annual report on the number of MarTech vendors out there. I think we're up to 8,000 right now. And um, you know, with every new MarTech vendor that gets released, some niche problem is solved. Um, but I think over time, when you have 30 niche solutions plugged into your website, there can be some, some issues that arise. So with that, you know, all these the dis disparate tools, and, and one of the key things must be trying to get them to, to talk to each other. You know, what, what is it that marketers can do to help them devise a good digital strategy to make use of the data so that it's not stuck in these silos? The architecture that I'm, I, I've been um, focused on lately is, is called a data hub, a storage point for consolidated customer data that can be ingested from other uh, data sources and distributed out to other data sources. So you can imagine kind of a hub and spoke um, uh, graphic where in the center is the data hub and one of the spokes might be your CRM system, another spoke might be your web analytics, another spoke might be your email service provider, another spoke might be uh, you know, form tracking or landing pages, advertisers. So in that um, scenario, you have far fewer connections to maintain between MarkTech uh, systems um, as compared to what I like to call your data spaghetti diagram, as opposed to your data hub diagram. You have your data spaghetti when you have every single, uh, uh, you know, data source talking to, you know, five or six other ones, and it just creates this whole confusing chart. But there are serious, um, blockers for organizations and, and adopting that architecture. It requires more coordination with IT. It requires a bit more savviness in terms of the back-end integrations and point-to-point -point integrations necessary to set up between those systems. So there, there's a lot of uh, blockers out there, but I think it, it is in the long run going to be the best choice for marketers to look at that type of an architecture. When you have that hub, is that make it easier to kind of manage some of the privacy issues that we're seeing around data collection and, and user information? Yeah, absolutely. It might seem counterintuitive in a way because by definition, by implementing a data hub, you are replicating your data into one more spot, but it's kind of like the last time that you need to replicate data, right? It, it's, it's the ultimate spot. And because everything is connecting through it, it's the ideal place to implement any sort of regulatory or compliance um, uh, uh, needs because right now it just feels like the wild west right when um, when you're putting uh, third-party JavaScript libraries onto the user's browser you don't have ultimate control over where that data ends up at the end of the day but when you focus more on server-side solutions and you have a clear data lineage meaning you understand where the data is coming from and where it's going to uh, you have more control over that and more control at the end of the day is going to reduce your, your liability and risk uh, in the long run so you mentioned the, the client side and the service side. 
Can you maybe give a little bit more detail to the differences and the, the benefits between those? So this is an important distinction and one that I think is sometimes lost on marketers who are more focused on the results of the tool, not you know the, the implementation or the, the guts of how that tool operates. The end result has been that as, as marketers have had more control to be able to test out and try different marketing technologies and become so easy to deploy them in the user's browser, the user's browser is being crushed by the weight of all of these tools. Uh, so that's one issue, just from a pure performance perspective. I mean, my God, go to CNN.com right now, which gets a three out of 100 on the Google Lighthouse performance score. And you can tell what I'm talking about. There's so many trackers running on that site. Uh, the other thing to be aware of are the privacy implications. Like I mentioned, you are not in control of where that data is going uh, if you're using a, a client side solution like that. And so what I'm pushing for, again, looking for, looking to the long, long, long view here, are more server side technologies where you, uh, the operator of the website, have control over that, uh, again, the data lineage, where the data is coming from and where it's going. And so I would look towards solutions like a Google Tag Manager server side, which is a server side implementation of Tag Manager. I would look towards uh, server side analytics solutions, like or, you know we implement Sitecore. At Blear, which has a server-side analytics and server-side personalization and A-B testing solution. So again, that's all managed from the server. It doesn't impact the performance of the client's browser and it doesn't impact, and, and, and you have control over where the data is going, unlike those uh, client-side libraries. All right, thank you for sitting with me here and, and walking me through some of the, the latest and greatest in the digital strategy and the uh, analytics activation. Uh, thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you. So that was Public Interface, thank you for watching. You just met Adam Roboto, the VP of Data Integration and Activation. Uh, make sure you catch us on Valir.com, read up some of the latest blog articles that we have on, on any number of different technology topics. Uh, make sure you catch us on Twitter at Valir, and hit that subscribe button. Make sure you follow up and, and catch the next video as it comes out.